Are you here, Robert? Or Michael? And I'm trying to think of the guy that got murdered here. Um, get you mixed up with the other side. Is it Alejandro? No, it's not Alejandro, that's Modesto. Uh, Drawing a blank. Brain fart, brain fart. It's been a long day. Oh, don't go out on me. Can you light up this device here again by the bear? You are just doing it. I thought I was videoing. And I apparently was not videoing. Oh, that sounds like a coyote. Alright, come on. What's going on here? Don't go out on me. You're getting like worse and worse, I swear, spirit box. Is he speaking to the box with the red light here? I don't really want to go inside right now. Not alone at least, not when it's getting dark. Unless the landowner might sneak up on me and scare me. He likes to do that. Anybody at the farmhouse here? I've been waiting for you guys to talk about those two ladies that came here with their own demon demons and got possessed. Can you tell me about them? I haven't heard from them. I don't have a way of contacting them. They didn't sign up for the tour. Um, I did offer to help them, reluctantly help them. But, uh, you know, if I can't get a hold of them, they're not contacting me. I don't know what's going on. Did you, did you say house? You almost sound like my friend that comes here a lot, which is creepy. Are you trying to sound like Griselda? Possible. Can you speak louder? A little slower? I guess I could turn this up. That wasn't up uh, all the way. Okay, I think I can hear you better now. Um, keep talking so I can adjust this, please. If I don't hear your voice, I can't adjust it. And if you could light these up again, that'd be really cool. You were doing it? A minute ago, but I thought I was videoing and I wasn't. Why does this place have such bad vibes? Aside from the fact the guy that was murdered here, although he doesn't come up, we don't hear him. And I found out he actually died in the hospital. So if he haunts anywhere, it's probably his hospital, the hospital or home. But hopefully he's moved on. I'm trying to think of his name. It's not Alejandro. It's Modesto. Um, it's not Gabriel. You know the murdered guy's name in the front of the house here? Uh, this place is so creepy. It really is. <laughs> I know you can't see it without the flash on my video here, but this water tower uh, with this noose inside. And I swore I was hearing footsteps earlier in the leaves. And it's not just people spirits here. There's animal spirits, and I do think there's a, at least one dark entity, and I don't know what he is. I mean, the spirits say there's demons here and there's a portal, but I don't know. I, I don't completely believe it. Um, I have had people get, like, kind of choked. Like, it's like a tickling in the throat, and I'm describing it because it's happened to me on one tour. It happened twice that night. I got, like, a tickling in my throat. My throat tends to collapse easily anyways. I think it goes from like past years of acid reflux, I don't know, and I kind of get panicky, but um, 
it started off as a tickle and then you kind of like lose your breath a little bit and it just it doesn't feel like somebody's strangling you per se but it's still a creepy feeling and it seems, tends to happen to uh, at least one person every time we come here tour or just for fun investigation or whatnot it did happen to one of the possessed girl the second one <coughs> um and then evil did i hear evil Why is there evil here if it's evil? It's just a farmhouse. There's two of them. There's another one that's falling apart across the field. We don't go on that. It's not safe. We get a woman that comes up there. Here we get women. We get children. And just men with really deep voices that don't sound friendly. But I swear it's like every location there's always some unfriendlies it seems like. With maybe the exception to Groveland and Jackson's, for some reason, it's just really nice spirits at those locations. Um, it's kind of refreshing, actually. But yeah, for those that are spreading the rumor that I provoke as if I'm cussing at spirits or, you know, whatnot, I'm just trying to get spirits to talk on tours. They don't always want to is to get answers i don't cuss at them i'm not threatening them i'm not stupid like that i do sometimes say um, if they're unfriendly they're cowards if they won't tell me their name especially if they are evil um, i've never actually had anything super bad happen to me i mean i've had uh, i mean i've had demonic cases but I didn't provoke on those, other than bringing up Jesus and praying. I mean, that's that's provocation too. I don't know if that's the, the best term for it, but look out on me here. Can't tell if you're on sometimes. Anybody here? But I mean, the, the two most common things I hear from spirits, especially at new locations, is um, either get out, leave, or help me. Oh, you're acting very strange tonight, spirit box. Hello? Yeah, uh, one thing that people I don't think realize, and this is again my opinion, and it's not because I was raised Catholic. I'm not really, I'm not a churchgoer now by any means. I'm not like hyper religious. I do believe, I do know the power of prayers work against evil spirits and holy water. They don't like that. Um, you know, crucifixes I, I think have some effect on them, but it's mostly the prayers and the belief and the faith and not fearing them, which is really hard to do. But, uh, where was I going with this? I forgot what I was going to say. Too much today? Too much today? I think it has been too much today. Like people are just hating and spreading lies in the paranormal field. Oh, I think I was talking about, um, in terms of my being attacked, I mean, I did have a demon first case that followed me. It made my family, my elderly parents, and I sick with weird bacterial infections. Um, they were hospitalized. I was almost to that point. I was taking colloidal silver and some homeopathic medicine that seemed to kick it. It was a UTI related thing. My mother, too. My father had C. diff, which the doctor was like, Have you been to third world countries? Like, no, I don't travel. But there was more than that going on. They were messing with the phones to get weird, weird voices, growls, um, voices that wasn't the person I was talking to, cut off conversations that would distort their voices. Um, it manifests as a very tall shadow figure that would, the dog would see, slithering anaconda-like things on the wall, tarantulas. Come on, spirit box, work on me. Uh, bad smells. Felt like cadaver around my my mother's uh, medical bed, and she is bed bound. She's got a lot of health problems. 
And it wasn't entirely sure, I wasn't entirely sure at the time if it was a demon that I brought indirectly from trying to help somebody um, in Manteca. The granddaughter was the main one being affected. The whole family was really, but the granddaughter I witnessed uh, in complete distress. And she was very young. But um, around that time, my mother was coming in and out of care homes and hospitals. And some of them, you know, hospitals are very haunted places. And I felt like she brought something from there, too. So it could have been two demons, three demons. I don't know. It's not like I had a lot of prior experience with that. It took a lot of praying and smudging to get rid of it months, like two or three months, I think. I never did get a priest involved, but I was like having nervous breakdowns, trying to deal with taking care of my parents alone, both of them, uh, no other family members helping. I'm not sure why I'm telling you all this. Uh, but I've had other cases where I've gotten rashes, particularly around like religious medal, St. Benedict medal I was wearing. It happened on the Turlock case. And in a, where was the other one? Um, I think it was a, one of the Rio Vista houses. In both of those cases, I'm actually getting a exorcist archbishop from Oregon to come out in October to help them because I feel so awful that they're still dealing with this thing. Um, even though really both of them are not getting, they're not getting priests involved, but they're not religious. So I don't know if they can. Uh, the church in general, they won't help you if you're not affiliated with the church. They won't necessarily believe you right away either. They'll think you're either nuts or on drugs, um, schizophrenic, whatever. One of the ladies lived right next to the Catholic church and she had prior asked them for help. She probably said too much and they wouldn't help her. But anyways, I managed to find somebody willing to come out and I will, I will help him with whatever way I can. But yeah, I, I actually really care about um, one of the families in particular. And I don't want to say all the... What the hell am I looking at? That was weird. Something whisked by my car. Um, I don't want to say all the health problems they're dealing with is personal, but it's like affecting the entire family, particularly with the daughter and her boyfriend. And I do have a video of this claw, clawed arm thing reaching out <laughs> towards one of the, the people that was there investigating. And she did have a video of a growl as well. I had one also of this bear in the living room, the same bear in this back room in the basement, growling as, as well. Um, a lot of us got sick there, like nauseated, vertigo feeling. I am just, I feel like I'm being watched big time right now. Very uncomfortable. I think I might go pretty soon. And I'm not hearing many voices on here. This thing keeps going in and out, not connecting. I'm also feeling the bugs bounce off of me, which was great. Hello. I'm hearing a lot of like leaves crunching or falling. I don't know. Probably just uh, oh, the spirit box, really? Not normally this bad. Who's here? Can you talk to me? Are you listening to my stories? I know I'm kind of rambling here. It's, it's really been a long day. I haven't gotten much sleep the past couple of nights. And then uh, to deal with drama, paranormal people, hating on each other, spreading rumors and lies. It's just ridiculous. It really is. And then to not have the guts to even mention the name of the person, but just allude to them. Oh, everybody knows who he is.
But there's a lot of self-righteous, narcissistic people in the paranormal field, and it's, it's really disgusting. Just very judgmental. Maybe judgmental on your methods, your investigating methods, or your cleansing methods. Or in the case of me with the ghost tours, if I make any kind of profit, oh my god. Of course, a lot of them are doing their own tours or cons or apps. They have their ghost apps or whatnot. You know, and I, I am making some money off of the tours, I'm not going to lie. <coughs> I do pay fees. Um, the equipment I use, I use quite a variety. I let people use it on the tours. It's very expensive. It gets damaged. Almost every tour, somebody drops something. I have stuff stolen before. <coughs> I do a lot of advertising. It's uh, very time-consuming, too, and stressful. Carrying this stuff around is, is hard on me because I've got health issues. I've got... Uh, <coughs> heard a voice that was not in the spirit box um, I've got fibromyalgia and sciatica and high blood pressure and whatnot you know I'm not uh, complaining I mean there's other people with health problems like I do that are on disability that are you know they probably could work but whatever and I do have a day job <laughs> no, you guys are not, you're not wanting to chat to me. It sounds like you want to disconnect my box here. It's not normally quite this bad. Yeah, definitely seeing things. I've had a couple of weird paranormal experiences yesterday and today. During the day on the road. <laughs> uh, going the lock yesterday, I was on 99. About to get on the floor, and I saw a man, clear as day, white t-shirt, blue jeans, walk onto the freeway. A um, couple of cars ahead of me, and took a double take, and he was gone. And of course, there was no accident, nothing happened. I don't know what that was about. Did somebody commit suicide going on the freeway? I, I don't know. Um, just a little while earlier, I was coming back from the fair, and I was going down, I don't know what road it was towards West Main, and I saw this translucent blur, kind of looked like, um, you know, like a mirage on a hot road, but it was concentrated into a, a, a form, a blob, and just a second after that, this dog comes running out, and I narrowly miss hitting him, and it was because of that blur that I saw the second or two before, probably not, not even a second somebody or something was trying to warn me and I would have felt awful if I hit that little dog and I have had spirits that have warned me of other car accident related deaths this is not the first time it's actually been many times um, I've had psychic premonitions for myself um, of course with family I've diagnosed medical conditions I've warned my father about things that he didn't listen and if he had it probably wouldn't have escalated to the point it did where him or my mother were in the hospital but um, I don't I don't care if people in the paranormal think I'm a fake psychic I don't care if they want to judge me on provoking people that go on my tours they enjoy it they have experiences a lot of times. Some of them are skeptics and atheists. And um, a few of them walk away believers. You know, they heard their names in the portal. Or they've been touched. Some of them have been lightly scratched. Um, and they want it to be. Some of them want it to be scratched. They want to have that experience. And spirits of scratch, I mean, that doesn't mean they're demons. I used to think that. It is one of the common signs of a demonic haunting is being bruised or scratched or whatever in your sleep <coughs> but regular not friendly ghosts can do it and I personally believe most of these spirits are earthbound and purgatory and I know that term that's a Catholic term and people don't like it that are not Catholic and Catholics have actually denounced it since then 
But I've had spirits tell me that, and it was not at a location where they were Catholic spirits, Catholic people. It was a German Baptist Brethren cemetery in Modesto, and they just happened to be friendly spirits. Most cemeteries I go to, they do tend to be friendly. So I believe they're here for probably a myriad of reasons. They might be being punished or given a second chance. They might have chose it. I think a lot of them do probably cho choose it indirectly by not going to not going to the light, staying for family, vendettas. Um, other reasons, you know. Suicides. Suicides make for bad hauntings. I used to you know, think that they wouldn't be tormented for what they did. I mean, people are not in the right frame of mind when they do stuff like that. It does hurt other people that love them, of course. And I'm not going to judge, but suicide hauntings tend to be bad. They end up being poltergeists. Some of them involve demons. Maybe the demons are just preying on them. I have had situations where demons prey on spirits at locations. Um, often it seems to be a portal involved. Places of multiple murders, deaths, tragedy. Um, some of them are tied to uh, a living medium living there. So there's a whole bunch of scenarios, there's a lot of gray areas. Uh, I'm still learning. I don't claim to know it all by any means. There's a lot of people in the paranormal that seem to think they know it all. And again, we have these ones in their soapboxes that are judging. <coughs> Based on rumors, you know, other people that hate them, whatever. Um, all I can say is investigate this Holly woman that I was speaking about in Stockton. Or not Stockton, uh, Fairfield, but her little paranormal group, I think it's defunct, is based in Sacramento. They have a similar name to my friend's group, Spirit, but it's, I don't know how they spell it. It's an acronym. Um, but with Holly, <laughs> she, she went on my lock tour years ago, and uh, all her videos are like narcissistic little, you know, the spirits are saying her name, they're asking for help, they're sad. And she has a portal in her bathroom and her mirrors are all filthy. She's got multiple mirrors that are reflecting on each other. So the lights are playing tricks on you. Um, a lot of dust orbs. Of course, she blows up the orbs. Oh, they got faces, you know. It's just, that's not good evidence. That's not good paranormal investigating. But uh, she stuck her nose in with the Turlock case. I actually indirectly, I think, involved her somehow or talking about it to her. I don't know. That was before she turned nasty. Um, I also had another guy I didn't trust completely. Pink, pink cat looking guy named Gabriel from also my lock tours. Nobody else wanted to help at the time. <clears throat> I contacted paranormal groups up and down the valley. Everybody had their little cynical critic, you know, criticisms. Oh, it's not demonic, you know. Whatever. Even Lloyd Auerbach. Auerbach? I don't know how to say his last name. But uh, based on what we witnessed, not just Gabriel, but another friend of the time, Nathan, it was definitely demonic. The spirit box, spirit box confirmed it. The attacks, her possessions. One of them I have it on a DVD of her being getting possessed flinging her head back, choking, foaming at the mouth, um, a lot of foam. It's, I don't know how you can produce foam, you know, faking things. <clears throat> and um, while I was grabbing holy water to crucifix to put on her back, I had my friend turn her over, she vomited. You see in the video, her eyes like roll back and she snaps out of it. Um, before that, she was screaming at her husband irate, which is generally how she would kind of come under. She'd get really upset and irate. Uh, telling him to get the boy's bed down and whatever gifted clothes that had uh, sensoria herbs in it that were cursed. And that was the whole thing with her, is her family were doing sensoria curses. And uh, I don't, I mean, whatever you, your opinion is on sensoria, this was a bad sensoria. Um, I've had other cases that involved sensoria that were demonic. Um, I'm not wild about witchcraft. I don't think they're worshiping the devil by any means. 
I'm sure there's good witches out there, you know. I've seen a lot of them, they're very critical of Christians. However, um, you know, it opens doors, you're doing spells. A lot of them are spiritually open as well, they might even be mediums. So as a medium, we tend to be prone to attack by, well, attack by bad spirits, but, you know, good spirits as well, or those who need the help. So we're, we're beacons in the dark. Basically what I tell people is we're beacons in the dark. Um, so they're drawn to us, kind of like a fly is to the light. <laughs> I know it's not a good uh, analogy there, but um, at any rate, there was a lot going on with that case. The spirit box talked about her having an affair with someone, even mentioned former priest. We got voices in Spanish talking about Santeria and sodomy, which I think, I don't know if that tied to the family, probably tied to my friend helping at the time. Of course he denied it, but he later told me well, I won't go into detail, but it, it did involve him and his getting involved with Santeria, as well as his Gabriel was involved in Santeria. But it was my mistake involving um, at least Gabriel at the time, because he tried to blackmail me later on, claiming I was conjuring demons. What did you say? That was not a friendly voice. I'm really uncomfortable out here right now. I'm not sure why I'm even doing this. I guess I wanted to do a rant video. <laughs> so the paranormal one. So you guys are probably just listening to me. But I went out of my way to help this woman. I didn't charge her anything. Um, it did affect me emotionally. I, I think it tried to follow me. It definitely followed Nathan. My friend Nathan at the time. Of course he lives at a former mortuary. That doesn't help. But I was literally in tears, uh, frustrated because it wouldn't leave. Even after, I think, two cleansings I did, it would still set off the motion devices. It would still say things, cackle, laugh, mock me, saying I was the new pope, saying it would get me out of the house and away from the family, which it did, or indirectly did, with them not cooperating. Um, the, the mother, the wife, Never got a priest, so that she went to the church, that the uh, pianist lady um, at the church told the priest not to help her. She said she saw a demon in the church. Uh, then she put me off for a while, saying family was visiting. And apparently either her or Holly mentioned to uh, this woman doing the video on me, not mentioning my name, that I had asked to do a... Uh, a tour there while the house was vacant because they'd been out of the house for a while staying at the grandparents and they were getting attacked over there and i did that because um, she told me she was financially struggling and i thought it was a way to make a little money for her and possibly get some answers too of course i would warn people you know it's not nice spirits over there it never happened um, i've had one other home actually two homes where they let me do that um, Again, not friendly spirits. I wouldn't say demonic, but just not friendly spirits. And I, I paid, I paid them well for it. You know, half of what I made. I don't see how that's wrong, especially when they're financially struggling. Um, and then she, you know, she got tired of it and called it off, and that was fine. Except later on, she kind of said things about me, but you know, whatever. She was wanting me to give her like free colloidal silver water, which I make and do free readings and you know I got tired of it she'd also de uh, dangle on a carrot but doing another tour at her house not being sincere just wanting the the colloidal silver water but uh, anyways I'm not gonna say her name I have no problems with her even if she's bad-mouthing me um, but yeah I'm beginning to wonder is it worth trying to help people in their homes it just ends up being drama I have made spirits move on or not made them move on it's the wrong term i don't think you can really make them move on i think you can encourage them smudging tends to be a temporary fix the band-aid um, i do think praying for them helps hearing their message i think helps they might choose to move on at that point i don't believe psychics or paranormal people can force them to go to the light and there are a lot that believe that 
I don't believe it. That's not been my experience. Um, a lot of times these ones that do their cleansing, smudging, they, they don't come back and check on the family. You know, and, and if they did, they'd probably find out those spirits are still there. But anyways, I have moved some demons on. I have seen some spirits that were human move on. Um, I have had a St. Michael encounter years ago when I started doing these demonic cases. And uh, it was very vivid. It's really hard to describe the colors and what I saw on Lander Avenue, on the, yeah, on the orchards, broad daylight. It was, uh, like I said, colors I can't really describe. Very like electrical plasma light forming on a pole, um, forming kind of like wings, I guess wings, dripping, radiating, pulsating. And the center body was just pure light, but it was like shades of neon violet and blues and white. Um, it was beautiful, it was brighter than the sun, 11 in the morning. And I did slow down and stop and look up at the pole. Nothing was there, nothing on the ground. It was, there were no electrical wires, there was no water. And I did get messages from a spirit for quite a time saying his name was Michael on the portal box. And I'm kind of skeptical of angels being able to talk on here or willing to talk on here. It tends to be the earthbounds or demons. But uh, initially he said he was an earthbound and later on he said he was an angel. So, you know, I don't know what to believe. I mean, even evil spirits can lie. But anyways, this Michael has been uh, very friendly. Sometimes I hear, you know, the name Michael. I don't know which spirit it is. There was one in lock on a accident site. A lot of vehicles involved falling into the Delta. And a Michael came up there. But Michael's a common name. And one thing I used to be skeptical of is angel pennies and feathers. And that was something else I was getting after that vision. And the cases that followed were pretty easy to deal with, I would say. Even though some of them had priests come or psychics come and flee in fear. In fact, the two ladies that were they got possessed on the Turlock farm a couple of weeks ago. They said they had two priests come to their house and it did no good. And um, I don't know if I drove the thing out of them temporarily or, or what. I have a feeling it was temporary. I mean, I'm not an ordained priest. I don't have any superpowers, special gifts. I just have a, a fairly strong faith, I believe, in Jesus Christ. You know, and I know there's people in the paranormal that are not Christian. They're not wild about 